Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. And thanks to the um, KIC group um, for organizing uh, this and other seminars. I'm honored to be here representing my uh, team from Brown University, um, many people um, from the School of Engineering, uh, School of Public Health, uh, Departments of Computer Science, Philosophy, um, and others, um, too many to list on the current slide. Um, but if any of them are uh, listening along today know that I appreciate uh, all of their um, meaningful collaborations. Um, I'm going to talk today about a uh, new newish project that's just started um, with NSF funding. Um, many people, some people will be familiar with a relatively recent uh, NSF mechanism listed here. And I'm going to speak about it a little bit partly because our funding comes from this mechanism, but also two of the other speakers uh, who are with us today will also be speaking about their project from the same mechanism. Um, so the NIH, uh, sorry, the NSF asked us to think to the future, um, to think in a kind of five to 10 year span about um, knowledge, methodologies, data, um, that in that period of time could potentially be available that would put us on more solid footing to be able to prevent and predict future pandemics. Um, so that was the call for proposals, was to have a grand vision of an area of intelligence that we could address that in five to 10 years would leave us on better footing to uh, allow us to hopefully um, prevent the next pandemic before it occurs. Our study uh, and our project is focused on all aspects of human mobility and social mixing. So why are we interested in mobility and social mixing? I'll give you two or three slides on that as some background. Um, the first is the obvious statement that infectious diseases move from people to people. Therefore, how we move through space and time will be a major determinant on uh, potential for a new pathogen uh, to spread through populations. More importantly, knowing the details about how people interact will give us in the future more refined tools that'll allow us to implement more effective and more nuanced interventions. Uh, all of us remember back to the beginning of this pandemic when um, uh, uh, essentially the interventions that were implemented were those, many of them were uh, aimed at um, cutting our social networks, um, limiting the number of people that we interact with um, in order to, to slow the spread. And because I argue, that we didn't at that time have really good quality information about how people interact, we were forced to apply uh, a hammer to the situation, um, a, an unrefined tool um, that, to, that, that forced essentially all mixing to stop. Um, if we are successful in the future, we'll better be able to map mixing that is conducive to spread and mixing that doesn't involve spread of new pathogens. And therefore we can be more nuanced in the interventions that we propose in the future. As an epidemiologist, I think of this in, in another way as well. And that is, I'm sure many are very familiar with this um, epidemiological concept of the basic reproductive number, which really tells us the um, likelihood um, of uh, uh, pathogenic spread. And it tells us on, on average, how many new infections will occur in a population uh, when a primary case is introduced into that totally susceptible population. And R naught, the basic reproductive number is um, dictated by three components. Um, the first is um, how likely transmission is to happen between any contact. The second is um, how, uh, how long is the uh, period of infectiousness? And the third is about how frequently people who are uninfected come in contact with infected people. It's this last piece, the C shown here, that is really the focus of our uh, work. In essence, the other two variables are largely biological variables that are going to differ depending on the new pathogen that emerges. Um, but but the human behavioral aspect is really contained in C here, and that's in essence what we focus our MAPS project on. I'm going to talk now um, briefly about the main components of our project, 
um, four main components and then one overarching um, sort of proof of concept exercise. Um, first, to um, articulate what our grand challenge was specifically, um, essentially we're asking how we can best use data on mobility and population mixing to inform real-time pandemic responses across a range of pathogens and under conditions of uncertainty while still balancing benefits, risks, and harms. To do that, we focus on four different areas shown here, and I'll mention, uh, speak briefly about what we do in each of these four different thrust areas. The first one relates to data. Um, clearly, there's um, some, though I would argue not nearly enough, uh, data on how we interact in different places and in different contexts. Um, so we're not the first people to collect or want access to this kind of data. What we're um, recognizing the existence of some data already, what we're trying to do here is um, create a catalog and make publicly available online a federated database that um, contains a multitude of different studies that focus on social mixing and mobility. We hope that this will be a, a resource for modelers, for pandemic researchers who are interested in incorporating social mixing and mobility into their study to be able to go to one central clearinghouse and find um, available data, hopefully already in a format that can be used in their models. The second uh, aspect that we focus on is around um, developing devices. So we um, work very closely with engineers here at Brown and biomedical engineers, um, trying to develop new technologies for measuring mobility, social interaction, and eventually biometrics. Right now we're focused on a phone app, which I'm gonna talk around about in, in a bit, um, but there are potentially other um, uh, devices and either other uh, methodologies that can help us to understand uh, people's movement. The third uh, aspect that we focus on is around modeling and prediction. So the data that we collect through our apps and through our wearables and the data that we uh, store and um, process uh, in, in the first thrust uh, are, are meant to be um, to feed our predictive models. And what we're hoping to do here is to develop a library of models that are flexible enough to be able to respond to uh, new pathogens that emerge. Um, so we're looking at a, a variety of different models that incorporate um, social mixing and, um, and human mobility uh, and to make them, again, flexible enough so that they're um, not specifically COVID focused, but are able to be adapted to um, the epidemiological context for a new uh, pathogen about which we don't yet know anything. Um, finally, a lot of our work um, is around ethics. And um, although it's listed as one of our thrusts, in a way, um, it really permeates all of the work that we do. Um, to collect and catalog the kind of data that we're talking about, means um, to possess uh, um, people's uh, private and confidential information. And so we need to be exceedingly careful about how we uh, do that, what data we collect, how we use that data, and how we keep it in a, in a safe and respectful way. We've just finished a, a week-long workshop where we brought together uh, ethicists, um, public health folks, uh, computer science people, and cryptographers to help us think about the technical challenges that we can address when, um, uh, when uh, using the kind of data that we're talking about and doing so in a uh, respectful and uh, ethical way. So those are the four main uh, thrusts or um, areas of work that our project is involved in. And I wanna just speak now very briefly about an overarching uh, almost proof of concept exercise that we're doing that brings together um, all of these uh, different thrusts all at once. And the idea is that um, using the university where um, myself and my um, uh, collaborators are based, that 
um, we would like to try to measure the entire social network at the university. So imagine if everybody at the university had uh, downloaded our uh, app, which is still in development. Uh, the app will use Bluetooth to uh, measure who's in your vicinity. That is to say, it'll, it'll measure the um, interactions that you're having, the duration of those interactions, and the distance of those interactions. That allows us to build a uh, dynamic um, uh, model of the social network at the university. What we then want to do is simulate the introduction of a new pathogen into that uh, into that network and uh, assign to the pathogen some specific epidemiological characteristics, whether that's the probability of transmission or um, specifically how transmission occurs, whether that's within five feet for uh, 10 minutes or whatever those particular char characteristics are. And it allows us to um, understand not only how the pathogen spreads through the network under different epidemiological characteristics, but also to identify um, points of intervention. That is things that um, we could change in the way that we mix and interact with others that could be effective in eliminating or containing the virtual pathogen. Our goal here is um, within the next 18 months to do a pilot within the School of Public Health um, we've already um, been engaged in some uh, um, deep community engagement, speaking with leadership, uh, students, faculty, staff, uh, potential users of this device about um, some of about um, some of their requirements for the device and suggestions for how the device might look and feel, and also addressing concerns about data security and data privacy. Um, we're hoping to get second phase of funding um, for this project. That would allow us to expand our work beyond the School of Public Health and to try to map the entire social network at the university. And beyond that, we're hoping eventually to add other measurements, including biometric measurements, potentially other measures that we don't haven't even yet thought about um, that could be used for not only mapping and understanding social networks, um, but also to uh, populate models that are allow us to predict and therefore prevent future pandemics. Um, so that's uh, all I'm going to say at this moment. I'm happy to um, answer questions and be involved in um, discussion about what it is that we're doing. Uh, I just do want to show this final slide here, if anyone is interested in the workshop that I mentioned a couple of slides back. Uh, where we fo focused on privacy and ethics in pandemic data collection. And you can find some of the talks uh, and slides there, um, as well as some of the background materials and uh, daily summaries from that workshop. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it at that and I will stop sharing and turn over to my colleagues for the next presentation. Thank you.